I think All we're right. in. Where's <laughs> Captain? Here we go. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Are we recording? We are. We are. What's going on, everybody? Here with another episode of Big Talk with Lizzie with your host, Lizzie the Gifted. And today, we have a super special guest, my homie, Anjanette Lene. Okay. Anjanette and I linked up via what's called the Cell Music Masterclass, which is a course that we both bought. And there was a community aspect to it. And we both like saw each other in an engagement group, which we have, and we were like, hey, Bay Area, like, she's SF, I'm here, Walnut Creek. And so, it's been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. We just made a crazy ass fucking beat um, and went ham. So, Anjanette, you know, maybe introduce yourself to the peeps, give them a little background on who you are, and yeah. Yeah. So, this is unconventional. We're eating crackers while we interview. But anyway, my name is Anjanette Lene. I'm from Hayward, California. So shout out to the East Bay, we out here. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty much an R&B and hip hop producer out here in the Bay. And like Lizzie said, we're trying to make moves out here, so. Yes, <laughs> so we were talking a lot about, um, cause this is a collab. You came through, beat, music, creating. Talk about some of the, cause I've been through hell ups and downs with collaborating. Can you talk about like how you like, where, where are you now with collabing and how you got here? So collabing in the beat realm is very different because both of us come from a background of artistry ourselves. Like, we both rap, etc. But in terms of, you know, hopping on a beat with somebody else, it's kind of been different. Thankfully, I actually like working with Lizzie. <laughs> and I like working with Andrew, so it works out perfect. Now, yeah, we came in hot with this one, but... Yeah, pretty much what the process is, is like, it's a back and forth between people, and if you don't know how to communicate, like, shit just be crossed, but uh, fortunately, I've worked with quite a number of people now, like, on beats, and it's gotten to the point where, you know, like, a lot of people pop up on the DMs, so nowadays, it's like, either you gotta pay to play, or I really, really do have to fuck with you, so right. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much how it is. Yeah, I think, like... For me lately, like I've been so, this is like my first collab in a hell of a long time because I'm so bad at it because I've been flaked on so many times with collabs. Like I would be waiting on a verse or waiting on whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then also like, like I come from the whole, like I produce all my own music background. So I, I, I like try to get out of the whole realm of like, I don't need anybody else. It's like, but it's good to collab with people. Mm -hmm. Like today we made magic happen like unfortunately y'all don't get to hear it yet mm -hmm. but like so my attitude with collabing is it used to be yes let's collab i got flaked on i don't want to collab with anybody and now i'm coming back up to the like come on mike come on let's collab and you and i linked up and it all worked out can you talk about some collab like horror stories like bad bad collabs that happened okay again i'm not like high and mighty about where i am with music but uh, there are certain people that are kind of on different levels, let's say, that are entitled for mm. some reason. They hop into my DM super crazy talking about, hey, let's work, let's collab. You know, like, I give them benefit of the doubt and actually try to peep the music, but I'm like, nah, like, I can't have mids and my name on it, you know right. what I mean? But um, that's why, I, you know, it's it sounds pretty salesy, but... In the sense that if you are serious about valuing my talent, my time, if you're not up to par quite yet with the level that I'm at, I do have a price tag on it nowadays. Mm -hmm. But other people are trying to wrap their heads around that concept and some people don't quite respect it just yet. I had somebody in my DMs the other day talking about like, oh, come on, don't let money get into it. Like, oh, you know, we right. gonna make that money when the song blows up. And I'm like, yeah, but... I don't know. <laughs> if the song blows up. Yeah, if the song blows up. Like, I'm saying, like, if I'm putting my name on something, I got to be able to co-sign, like, what I'm working with, you know? Can't just be anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I, I've gotten the same types of things where it's, like, when the song blows up. It's like, dude, if you've been in this game long enough, you would know that, like, your song's not just going to blow up. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to put in hella work and hella time, number one. Mm -hmm. And we talked about earlier off camera, you know, I'd love to address now with, with the whole, like, etiquette. Mm -hmm. How, like, we talk about how, like, you and me just came into the game with the right etiquette. Mm -hmm. You would never just ask another creative for something for 
free because yeah. you respect the person. So it's like when someone comes at me like that, mm -hmm. immediately I know you're not going to blow up because mm -hmm. you don't have the right etiquette, you don't have the right mindset, mm -hmm. so chances are you're not going to be successful. I mean, what mm -hmm. do you think of that? No, that's totally it. Like, I pride myself in trying to be as professional as possible when I work with anyone. Mm -hmm. Or even in anything that I do, actually, you know? You have a certain, um, like you said, common etiquette, but some people just fail to miss that mark a lot of the time. And like I said, like, even coming up as a rapper, I never ask anybody for no free beats. No. Like, I understand that there's time and effort that go into any part of music. And again, for other people to kind of just try to rip you off along the way or like ride your coattails, you know, <laughs> like there are people that pop up. I'm like, how's the song going to blow up? And again, like I understand followers aren't everything, but if you're not doing your due diligence to have your name pop up and do your own branding and marketing for yourself, what makes you think the song is going to blow? <laughs> totally. That's my take on that. 100%. It's like... <laughs> The people who I do favors for are the ones who never ask for it. Yeah. Not because they don't ask, but because of the fact that, like, I'm doing you a favor because I really like what you're doing. And it's like, they wouldn't ask. Like, there's an artist who, who I'm not going to say who it was. I, I've done free work <laughs> for them, mm -hmm. and they, they like, tried to refuse the free. Mm -hmm. They were like, no, no, like, I can't accept that from you. Like, I can't pay you, and I really don't want it to... And I, like, push them so hard to give them free mm -hmm. because I love what they do. Mm -hmm. So it worked out, but that's the type of attitude I like. It's the attitude of, like, you're not asking me for discounts. You're not trying to leverage the I'm a broke rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a that's not a reason or an excuse. Like, mm -hmm. I am too. We're mm -hmm. all broke rappers and producers. <laughs> so, yeah. like, why would I give you a discount? Because I got the leverage. Yeah. I have the skills. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What have you done to, like, what have you done to, like, increase your skill set and get better? Man, so I am a lifetime student. So when it comes down to anything like production, marketing, business, even, like, you know, there's this awesome free tool called Google. <laughs> <laughs> and YouTube, honestly, like, I am a YouTube vet. Like, man, everything that I learned pretty much is, like, from there. And, of course, like, having some mentors in the game like uh like you said we paid for this program or how should we yeah sell music it? masterclass it's like a yeah. course so it's like a course so along the way you know you pick up some marketing tactics from there and then like you said it's like the network that was included in there is like the best like we have some veteran producers even artists that are in the same group chat that are down to put you on game you know like mm -hmm. i love people that aren't stingy with knowledge like Anything that I learn, like, I try to put hella people onto it, like, whether it be, like, my YouTube tutorials, anything, just to get information out there, because, you know, this game is pretty hard to play, and if you got people that are there to help you, use them, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like when we get to that level, we're not going to be stingy with it. Like, we no, would always, never. like, help, but now, if it's those trashy people, <laughs> then we're like, no, get out of my face, but, but I, we understand, because, like... I feel like from the perspective we're at, like we're, we know we're bound to make it mm -hmm. and we're so hungry. Mm -hmm. So like when we get there, we know those people are there. Like mm -hmm. we know that the best are in the trenches. Mm -hmm. And so like we're going to go and, and help. Mm -hmm. It's hard though because in the mud, it's not just us. It's mm -hmm. us, but also all the other trash mm -hmm. that's, that's there. I mean, how do you like, what are some things you do? to separate yourself and maybe differentiate yourself from like all the other producers, artists, and creatives? Yeah. Well, just like in any other industry or market, everything is quote unquote saturated. But what I try to play on that sets me apart from other people, one, I'm not going to say there aren't any like women that are in the producing game, but there's not too many in comparison to our counterparts. Right. So that's definitely something I try to like reach out. Like I'm trying to find more women that are in the music industry and like pop up together. And then of course, like no matter how you make your music or whatever your style is, every individual has their own steez. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have like a lot of musical influences and it's not just like hip hop and R and B, which I usually make, but you know, back in high school, I was totally into, like, hardcore, metal music. Like, a lot of mm. those different types of genres still play a factor into how I produce my stuff. So, 
Yeah, it's all about just having your own style and like when it comes to branding myself, I put my face out there. Mm -hmm. I try to put my personality forward as much as possible, but still be, you know, I guess like consumable to the public. Totally. <laughs> so you just gotta find a way to like market yourself and find the right audience for you too. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, a couple of things. One, when we, like when I started seeing your content, that you, you have this like hella chill ass, attitude even on camera mm -hmm. and so I was like this is a real person like this seems like you know what I mean like you just had this sense of just like authenticity that I vibed with because you're humble and like plus the beats are dope oh. the um just like all your behind the scenes videos I'm so with it like I like that and it gave me a sense and our styles match like the beats you make I like mm -hmm. so I was like okay we vibe on that you seem authentic Bay Area there's just a lot of connection yeah. the other thing too that like I kind of, this is, I guess for the audience, it's like, mm -hmm. if you're, like what I've seen is like, if you're not willing to invest money into your traffic, mm -hmm. you have to put out content and yeah. you have to just, I think a lot of people overthink how am I different and then mm -hmm. they don't put anything out. And it's mm -hmm. like, no dude, you're different. No, to no me, you're what. different because you're a different human. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, put your stuff out there and it's going to be different. It's going to be, yes, it'll have similarities. But at the same time, you're your own person. And just mm -hmm. putting your, like you said, how you put your face out there. It's like, if you put your face out there, there you're different. Yeah. In that Point way. Blank. Yeah. I think people have a lot of trouble getting authentic on camera. Mm -hmm. Is that something you ever struggled with? Oh, in all honesty, yes. Because how natural is it to talk to a camera? Yeah, it's like... Not very. It, right. <laughs> but honestly, it just takes practice. Mm -hmm. Like, even before, like... I was even trying to blow up with content and stuff. I wasn't really on social media taking too many selfies and stuff like that. Just because, like, not that there's anything wrong with it. That just wasn't me at the time, you know? So getting comfortable in front of camera is definitely something that takes practice. But that's, like, with everything. Like, the more that you do it, like you said earlier, get your reps in and it's going to get better. Yeah. yeah. That's it. It's, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's just, like, getting your reps. I feel like... That's another thing that a lot of people have trouble with mm -hmm. is like, yeah, like they don't want to get their reps. They come up with their excuses and I'm like staring out because I'm just thinking of all yeah. the times that I've heard it from like, I really don't like working with people who have that attitude because <laughs> they might be that. talented yeah. and they might be good people, mm -hmm. but I can't waste my time. Like if you're not committed to yeah. what you're trying to do. Yeah. That's another reason I really wanted to link up with you because I mm -hmm. see all the content you put out. Yeah. It's not about the amount of followers. I don't yeah. care about that. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a dude in our group, JB Ryan's. You yeah. know who that is? Nah. He's, dude, you gotta check out this dude. He's in our Cell Music mm -hmm. Masterclass DM group. Mm -hmm. He's this black dude from North South Carolina or something. What, what is his? He like, has like. Alternative an, name. <laughs> I don't know. You know how we all usually go by our handles? And I think stuff? it's literally I am JB Ryan's. Oh, sheesh. But but he's I'll I'll pull him up really quick. But he's super dope. He has like maybe five hundred followers, like not that much. But he puts out hella content mm -hmm. and shows himself and shows himself off. And he's somebody I would work with, not because of the followers. It's not about that. Because I understand this is him right here. Because mm -hmm. I understand where you're at. Like getting followers and all that, it's not easy and it's a steady climb. Mm -hmm. And like, so it's not like. It's loading. Yeah. It's not like followers dictate your talent level. Yeah, no, not at all. If anything, it's like quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of people that got all those numbers and stuff, but when you really kind of like sit and listen to whatever they're putting out, is it really good? Right. Or does it kind of just look good? Exactly. Yeah, no, it's like a lot of artists that are really big, mm -hmm. you know? And music's subjective, so when I say this, it's a great take it with a yeah. grain of salt. Like, artists exactly. who aren't good, yeah. they're not that talented. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're huge, but they're not talented. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure we're more talented than a lot of other artists. Mm -hmm. But the part of the game that I learned was mm -hmm. that's not... What it's matters. not about talent. Yeah. It is. You need talent. Like, I'm at like, least a little bit, you know. You should have something. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, and it doesn't hurt to have it. Like, so yeah. we... Our hunger level will carry us so far. Because once we get... Maybe it's the right team or mm -hmm. the money to push into it. It's like we're just going to freaking skyrocket because we mm -hmm. got talent. It's not like the industry made us. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like we made ourselves. So once we get the resources that we need, we're going to, that's why I believe in us because mm -hmm. we're just going to blow because we have talent, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, what do you think of like, um, 
what do you, what do you think what do you think is a is a, is a factor that what's like what's like an aspect of your skill set and it could be personality mm -hmm. or when you get in the studio what's a what's a what's an aspect that you take pride in that you work on a lot that's like a yeah yeah i don't know how to ask yeah. that any other way how to phrase it in any other way but i think really when it comes down to it, it's just like working with people the biggest thing i take pride in is like i said earlier the professionalism mm. like um today i have artists coming through and i also do like some audio engineering and like record sessions for people i've been complimented at the fact that like i'm just ready to work like ain't no such things as taking breaks if you don't need it i'm not gonna ever prompt a break if you're still working you know what i mean and it's like everything that I bring to the table, I'm not trying to half-ass nothing, you know? So I may not be the most talented person in the room, but I'll work hard and get you the things that you need at the time that you want it. So mm -hmm. deadlines is something that I really push for on a lot of people too. It's like, yeah, we could work, but if you're not trying to see this out like within the next couple of weeks, then like, why are you hitting my line right now, you know? So I think that's really the thing that's going to have me escalate is like how hungry I am and like my dependability, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. I struggle with working with people a lot, like, mm -hmm. because I came from like, when I first started, like my first seven years mm -hmm. was dependent on people. Mm -hmm. And then once I flipped the switch and said, I'm going to produce mm -hmm. now, play piano, record my own vocals, mix master. Mm -hmm. For the past two years, I've been in a very like, I don't need anybody mood yeah. <laughs> and I don't want anybody because I got screwed over basically not screwed over, but like these first seven years, I didn't get as far as I needed to go. Mm -hmm. Now that I like two years deep into producing, I've gotten so much further. Mm -hmm. And so, um, now though, like I'm trying to like get back into working with people cause you can't really, it's really almost impossible to just do it all by yourself. Yeah. Honestly. That's with anything, like, whoever mm. says they're, like, quote-unquote self-made is, like, you know, you have somebody helping you. It don't right. matter, like, who it is or how they help, but, like, we can't control everything that happens, you know? Right. Like, even us meeting, it came down to, like, us finding that class, you know? Right. Yeah. 100%. And, like, I think, like, my stance on whole, like, being self-made like that mm -hmm. is, um, for me, I feel like if you don't have the money yeah. to pay somebody then you have two options you either have to do it yourself mm -hmm. or you exchange service for service yeah which is hard that's okay. really really hard and like as a rapper you have oh man <laughs> you have no you have no value in my opinion mm -hmm. if all you do is rap mm -hmm. and you have a producer you want to work with mm -hmm. what are you going to trade them you if you're get money <laughs> yeah like you gotta get money or if you're a dope videographer or a dope photographer yeah maybe you talk to the producer say hey like i can film content for you if mm -hmm. you give me beats now we might yeah but i knew when i was a rapper i had nothing yeah and i was like dude i suck mm -hmm. like i'm a rapper i'm worthless to the game like mm -hmm. that was another reason <laughs> i gotta just be real that's where i thought and like if you're a rapper listening to this right now, like you should have that realization with yourself. If you have no other skills but writing lyrics and recording, you're not worth anything. You need to up your skills. That's where I came from. And mm -hmm. then I got to the point where I could, like it's crazy, like the leverage that I, you and me have mm -hmm. on others is like, you can make beats, mm -hmm. you can engineer, you mix and master. It's like, there's, there's, it's so valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, you brought your camera. You have a freaking camera. I don't even have a camera. <laughs> like, so that's value. Yeah. And I, I want people to understand that, like, if you're not going to pay somebody, you have to, you got to give them something. And just helping them blow up with their beat is not it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You know? For real. But I think that's a concept that people are struggling with. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it really just comes down to just like weeding through the numbers. Like mm. everything is pretty much a numbers game. Like whether you're trying to sell something, if you're trying to reach an audience, it's like not everybody's gonna fuck with you. That's like number one thing that you should learn now. Mm. But it's like for the people that I do, for the people that matter, like those are the relationships or like the type of people that you want to like nurture, mm. you know? But like you said, like there's a dime a dozen people that could write like if I really wanted to, like, I could borrow up my own songs, you know what I right. mean? But, yeah, like you said, it's just, like, about creating together with people. I think 
that's really where the beauty comes in. And if you find the right people, like, yeah, good stuff is going to happen either way. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, no, you're right. Like, it's so about, yeah, it really is about getting with people, you know, like, Having the right people around you is so important. Yeah. It's so important. It's, it's a journey, though. It's, you don't need a lot of weird people. <laughs> you, oh my god, so, oh yeah, like, I've definitely linked up with my fair share of, like, not great people. Uh, yeah. Oof. Yeah, so, like, um, and you know, that, that, have you heard that saying that you're the average of the five people you hang out oh, with Oh, yeah, most? definitely. How real is that? I, super, dude, like... Man, I don't come from much, you know what I mean? But it's just like, try to look at that same concept and reflect on your own family. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, love my family, but I know we didn't come from nothing. It's like, we ain't got no millionaires or anything that even makes upper middle class money, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it really does come down to, like, the circle, you know, like, if you're the smartest person in the room, I truly believe that you are in the wrong room. Yes. You know, I'm trying to be with people that elevate me. And it's like, i got to bring something to the table myself. I can't just be, like, mooching off of other people's success, you know? That's why mm -hmm. it comes down to finding people that are just as hungry as you. And, like, having a mentor is pretty important. And I'm, like, working on finding whoever that might be for myself, you know? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, like... Yeah, if you're the smartest in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yeah. I agree. That's, uh, yeah, you know, like, for me, like I said, I spent the last two years in the room by myself. Yeah. Like, with the work. <laughs> yeah. You know what? what's crazy, though? I had, a like, I had an issue separating, or I had an issue because I would separate music and life. Mm -hmm. When I, when, talking about the five people you hang out with the mm -hmm. most. I translated that to mean the five people I work on music with the most. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's your mom. Like, I live with my mom and dad, so yeah. that's two. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, who's your girlfriend? You mm -hmm. might not work on music with your girlfriend, but that's mm -hmm. someone you spend time with. And then who are your two closest homies? Mm -hmm. Whether you work on music with them has nothing to do with the average thing. Yeah. So I was, I learned that the past two years. Mm -hmm. I learned that it's like, oh, wait, 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 like, and by the way, like as a musician, if you work on music with none of the five closest people, you mm -hmm. might have a problem. Yeah. Because now you need to add some music people. Yeah. You know, luckily for me, like I told you, all my closest homies, we all work on music. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. But, and my parents support me. Yeah. Like, they're cool with what I do, meaning. Like, yeah. Like, um, so I had an issue with that. Like, my thing was always like, I need to find more music people or I need to like, uh, I don't know. Like, it just was hard for me to like, I don't even know. Like it's hard for it was hard for me to blend together that concept. Yeah. It's like life and music aren't different. It's the same. Yeah, it's all cohesive. How do you balance out music and like your grind mm -hmm. and like life? You know, honestly, like that's been quite a little bit of work, but I say like you just have to prioritize. It's mm. just like anything else that you do. It's kind of like it becomes like routine, but you never want to look at like having relationships in that kind of way. But you have to think about it like, how do you divvy up your day? Mm. Like, I try to dedicate as much time to my family, my friends, and of course, like my girlfriend. So it's just like no one feels neglected. But at the same time, I'm lucky enough that the people who are in my circle know what I'm trying to get at, and like they support the grind. Like, like it's seldom that i ever just go out on weekends and stuff like if anybody hits me up is like hey what you doing it's like you already know like i'm in the booth i'm like in the lab i'm doing something so um i'm fortunate enough that like my girlfriend actually does make music with mm. me sometimes so that is a point. what does she do bro she's hella good at everything like she plays guitar she plays piano she could sing and it's like that I have some beats that are up that um, she made some of the melodies and stuff for. So, yeah, I be like, I went in. I'm you are. Super and you guys live together. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's even better now. You have, like, your collaborator yeah. right there. You have in, in-house collab. And it's like, she respects the grind because, like I said earlier, she's a pre-med student. So she's busy herself, like, studying, trying to do what she got to do. So... It's not like we ever butt heads. We never had that, oh my god, like, you never spend time with me. Like, that's not even a thing in our relationship. So, you're right. It's just, you got to surround yourself with people that are just like that, too, you know? That's really cool that you have, like, such a dope relationship with, yeah. with her. I mean, that's, 
Yeah, that's that's tough to find. That's really hard to find, especially with what we do. Yeah. Because we aren't gonna go to work at nine and come back to five. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start at different times. We're gonna end at different times. We're gonna be different places. And you just gotta have that partner that's understanding of that, and that's it's really hard. It's really hard to come by. So how like how long have you guys been together? For like two years. Do you mind speaking on stuff? I won't get oh, too yeah, personal. I, I just would like I'm. Super... I love to talk about Barry, so we could keep it going. Perfect. <laughs> so you guys been together two years, yeah. and how long have you lived together? Yeah, this is going to bust us out, but like honestly, like a year and a half. So <laughs> you live together like pretty damn near, like right yeah, together. Yeah, because I mean, like that's just like time is of the essence. But like when you're hella comfortable with somebody like that. It just kind of like flows, and for us, like it totally worked out, you know. Right. Yeah. So why not? Um, very interesting. So like two two years, been living together a year and a half, and she does music, but she's pre med. Mm hmm. So it's different life paths, but you guys, it's sort of like you guys get it because she's hella busy, you're hella busy. Yeah. That's really cool. Have you ever like? It doesn't have to be romantic partners. Anybody in your life, mm -hmm. friends, romantic partners that weren't supportive or as supportive as you wanted yeah i mean like and i'm gonna put them on blast but there are certain people that you know if i told them like i was gonna go to the studio and stuff like they didn't really like see it as seriously as like my girlfriend does now you know mm -hmm. and it's like oh when i used to like be a recording artist i would like play him songs and stuff and it's like not nearly as hyped up as like even strangers would be for me you know so mm -hmm. I definitely had like the inverse type of relationship before, so it's like way better <laughs> nowadays, right. you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh I think it's weird because I just I have a weird situation. Like I had my homies be super supportive from the first day. Mm -hmm. From the first day they heard my music. Yeah. And they didn't I'm not saying that they thought it was good, mm -hmm. but they were like we know what you're doing. We're going to help. Mm -hmm. And so I know when somebody's not that supportive, it's clear. It's like, all right, my boy, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of my friends, Gabe, we've mm -hmm. literally been friends for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And he was with me before I started writing raps. Mm -hmm. So I know what support looks like because I have him. And then mm -hmm. Melvin and then Jason and Evan and Abe. Like I have all these, Thomas, my cousin Thomas. Like mm -hmm. they, because they tell me like it is. Mm -hmm. And so when they like critique me, it's not like they're talking shit to me. They're yeah. like telling me because they know I can do better and they want me to do better because they love me. Yeah. yeah. Talk about like criticism and like what what value do you have on criticism? Uh, like I appreciate it a whole ton. Like and honestly, I used to be like, I don't know, like if I had some hater ass comments on like my social media, like. Of course, like, it kind of makes you flinch a little bit, mm. but it's never to look at it too deeply and take it too personally. But for the people that I actually do love and care about their opinions, like, their constructive criticism does totally help me out. Mm. Like, my sister is, like, my best friend. Like, if she doesn't like it, then I'm like, Ugh. You know, like, I gotta, like, change something about it. But that's kind of, like, how... I see it too, and it's not like anybody that was super close to me ever like hated on the stuff that I was doing, but definitely if, you know, if I could say something better, if I could switch up a flow, like, and they know I could do better, like, they'll tell me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, 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 I feel that. Cool. All right. So, you know, our time's wrapping up. I know you got to get going. Is there any last words you want to say or you want to tell people where they can find out more about you? No, I just want to thank you for having me over here, mm -hmm. and you know, this was great. Make a dope ass beat, and um, if you guys want to listen to my music, I am on Beat Stars. I am on Instagram, the Get same it. at for everything. It's Anjanette Lene, and I'll spell it over here for you guys, because you know. Why spell it when you can just write the text? Follow her on <laughs> IG. If you're a rapper, go buy her beats on Beat Stars. Uh, if you like YouTube stuff, go watch her YouTube channel. She's dope. Trust me, okay? Lisa the Gifted, big time co-sign right there. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're on YouTube or listening to it on the pod, appreciate you. Don't forget to tell a friend about the podcast and spread the love. Stay gifted. We'll talk to you guys later.